to make it 417 to 117 and it's a terrific day for the Premier County they are the Premier hurling team in Championship hurling this year no question or doubt about it as Michael Cahill pops it out a few seconds of the three minutes of added time to be played Kilkenny a well beaten side at this stage Michael Rice with a final shot over the bar his only point in this game but too little far too late all eyes now on the referees Michael wanting to blow in just a couple of seconds possibly this next puck out will signal celebrations like you haven't seen for a long long time it's all over and Tipperary have won the All-Ireland dramatically a superb, fantastic display by Liam Sheedy's team. And the five in a row has been banished once again. It has proved to be a target too great for Kilkenny, as it was for Kerry back in 1982. Brian Cody, magnificent manager that he is, he has lost an All-Ireland final here in what was his tenth time to take a team to the final on the first Sunday in September but it is the Tipperary fans and team and mentors who deserve to celebrate for a long long time very few people rated their chances it was all about the drive for five but they've been foiled and Owen Kelly has led the Premier men from Tipperary to win the Liam McCarthy Cup and take the title for the 26th time. The final score, Tipperary four goals and 17 points. Kilkenny, one goal and 18. On a great day for Tipperary, Christy Cooney, the GA president, hands over the cup to Owen Kelly. The Premier County are the top county in hurling for 2010. What a day to be a Tipperary. Ticker tape reception. Well, this is what we wanted to see an opportunity to properly celebrate the captain receiving the cup. People staying in their places, enjoying the moment, savouring the occasion. And Owen Kelly from the South Division of Tipperary, the first man from that division to take the cup. Brian Cody and the others, Jackie Tyrrell, bitterly disappointed. It wasn't to be the most brilliant team I've seen in hurling, beaten this afternoon, but beaten by Tim. I can hear you. I didn't lose that. I just knew Tim and Ethan. Tan Arsarm and Kuncha, ARD works on Fern. I was going to tip it on. The next man, what can any of us say, guys? He came in when the ship was sinking. But by God, is this ship sailing today? All the way from Port Row. All the way from Port Row. Our Messiah, our leader, Liam Sheedy. We're looking forward to the party you told us tomorrow night. Yeah, well spoken, Owen, there. Well, let's get reflections from our panel, first of all. Before our audience, Don O'Grady. A uh, great day for Tiff. Um, you know, they came. Liam Sheedy said it during the interview. They came last year. I suppose they were unlucky to, to lose it, but you know you, you have to say that they deserve to win it. They, um, you know, their passion, their enthusiasm, the way they went to both things. They nevertheless, Kilkenny settled and Kilkenny were fantastic champions. Let's be let's be honest. But I think a great day for the likes of Liam Sheedy and for Owen Kelly. Owen has soldiered long and hard, and it was great to see him raise the McCarthy Cup. And you know, there'll be a tremendous night, uh, not just tonight and tomorrow night in in, um, in Liberty Square, but it's there for a long time. But it just goes to show, does you know. The, the foreman always lose the first round of the championship badly and it's all, yeah, it's all up here after yeah, that. But, but there's no doubt, Pete, that did seem to get Tip back on track, that it defeat to Cork. Brought, it definitely brought them back down to, down to the earth because uh, I think they'd lost their way after the All-Ireland final. Um, they got a lot of praise. They were told they were next in command. They're going to win the All-Ireland this year. I think they lost sight of the Munster Championship completely. They came straight back down to the earth. They've worked extremely hard since. They've improved with their, every game. And in fairness, this time last year, they needed one or two more players. 
and Liam Sheedy went away. He introduced new players all the way along. He came to the All-Ireland final today with three different players. He knew he couldn't come with the same team again or we couldn't get beaten again. Uh, fantastic result. The best thing about it is, for me, um, while it's disappointed for Kilkenny, I'm delighted that a team beat them that went up to Kilkenny's level to beat them. They brought such a magnificent display of Hurland to Crow Park to topple the great champions that, that yeah. Kilkenny were. A word about Kilkenny, Michael. You've been a, an admirer of this team for a long time. Yeah, well, I think everybody has. You know, they've won seven other in the last ten years. Um, been a brilliant team, and they were brilliant today. I'd agree with what Pete said there. Um, it wasn't just that you know they handed it to Tipperary. They were six points down when Henry Shetland went off after 13 minutes. They, came, they went in a point down at half time, and they had the wind at their back in the second half. They went seven down, brought it back to three, and they kept fighting and fighting and fighting. But at the end of the day, you know. They were great champions, but it was about Tipperary today. And it was, it was nearly a replica last year, except Tipperary took their goal chances yeah. this year. And uh, last year they didn't, and they left Kilkenny in the game. And Kilkenny, uh, you know, stole it with a couple of late, with a late goal, couple of late goals. So, you know, Tipperary um, are a very, very good team, very young team, five under twenty ones on the first fifteen, and another four or five on the subs bench. So, uh, they'll be looking forward to the future as well as today. Okay, then. Well, let's go to our audience. We've a distinguished audience with us. <coughs> Len Gaynor, who joined many a great day with Tip. Len, how big a surprise was this victory in, in Tipperary? Oh, not that big, really. Uh, we'd always be expecting to win, you know, no matter who we were against. But today was a huge occasion. And, uh, you know, you were playing the greatest team that ever came out of Kilkenny and probably the best team of all times. And they were going for five in a row, which was monumental as well. And Tip were in the breach. Tip were, watch were coming to challenge them. And that was huge in its own way. And Tipperary stood up to it very well. I must say, they all played to their full potential today. There was no nerves, there was no anxiety, nothing like that. They played to their full potential right through. And that's, that's a great achievement by both management and players, I think, to do that. And so I think it was a magnificent victory, huge victory, to be such a good team as Kilkenny and to beat them so convincingly as well. And to play such great hurling. The game of hurling today was, was really enhanced by both these teams. Magnificent hurling, magnificent catching, magnificent scores. Uh, great tackling, hard tackling, very manly stuff. It was brilliant to watch, okay. and the old game of hurling is very much alive and well. Good. Well, behind you is Antrim manager Dinny Cahill, but a proud tip man. Uh, Dinny, what impressed you most about the tip performance? I suppose they, they never lost focus on, on, on the job in hand. Right from the throw in, they were totally focused, let's say, on, the, on winning that game. And you could see it from, from uh, Brendan Cummins right up to the corner forward. Every player fought fierce hard for every ball. Like, there was no ball cleared easy from, by, say, by the Kilkenny defence. The hook and the blocking was absolutely tremendous by the Tipperary team. All right. John Henderson, a Kilkenny reaction. Um, is it fair to say they didn't get firing today, a lot of them? Oh, we're disappointed and they, we would think that they didn't play to their potential. I think yeah. they'll think they didn't play to their potential, but they played as well as they were let play today. And I think the hungrier team, the team that wanted to win the most, won. It's an old cliche, but yeah. that's what happened today. Ali Canning beside you, Tip beat Galway. Were they a lot better today than when they beat you? Um, yeah, I think they have improved. I think as the, as the year, the season has gone on, and uh, I think everybody knew that Tip probably had to put in the, their best performance to date in order to beat Kilkenny, and I think that's what they've done. Um, so they're, they'll be very happy. But I think they have improved as it's gone along. And where and, have they improved? Would you say? Uh, well, I mean, they opened up Kilkenny today for the goals, especially, and they probably, you know, targeted that that they would have to do that in order to be to be there thereabouts at the end. Mm. But uh, a couple of the breaks and a couple of the goals they got was was exceptional, really, with the moves they put together. You know, yeah. Limerick Sally Moore, and that was your first cousin collecting the cup, isn't that right? It was, yeah. Um, Owen was the first cousin, and delighted for himself and and Paul, I suppose. Uh, for Owen to captain the team's done, and said he's been a stalwart that yeah. temporary team for the last number of years. So. Uh, I'm sure there'll be great celebrations down in Mullinahone tonight as well. Yeah, And he kind of had a point to prove himself, you, you, you sensed. And he's really battled hard this year, hasn't he? Well, he is, but I think, um, you know, people, people like Nala Joan for the, for the, um, you know, for the great uh, skill he has. But I think uh, this yeah. year, in the last couple of years especially, I think his leadership qualities really come to the fore. And you can see in all Tips games this year, you know, everything seems to be revolving around him. And he's a great motivator and a leader of that yeah. temporary team. That certainly showed today, yeah. Fergal Hartley is behind you. Fergal, talk to us about the uh, tip defensive display. Yeah, I think before the game, you know, that was an area where some people felt that they could be exposed because, I mean, Kilkenny have, and ha have some serious firepower up front. Yeah. But uh, their half-back line in particular were immense. I mean, I thought Parik Mar was absolutely fantastic today. And again, like, you know, at the start of the year, they've used three full-backs this year and there were some question marks there. And Paul Curran in the semi-final and the final was, was had huge games, you know. So, yeah. uh, you know, Kilkenny, they did it with Kilkenny what Kilkenny have been doing to teams for the last five years. 
And I know the panel here were uh, also very impressed with the, with the full-back line as well, and we'll be chatting about that later on because we've lots more still to come. After the break, we'll have analysis from today's senior hurling final. You're very welcome back to the Sunday game. We'll be going live to Michael Lester with the Tipperary team celebrations shortly and we'll be hearing how the celebrations are going down in Thurles. But first we're going to have a look back at some of the key points in today's games. And I suppose, Donald Grady, the first thing we have to look at is four goals. That's bound to win you in All-Ireland. Well, Des, you know, it is an old cliche. John was talking about cliches and it is an old cliche that, that goals win matches and that um, I suppose if you had any criticism of Tip last year, they'd have heard it ad finitum about the, the chances they created and the chances they missed. But every clear-cut chance they got Des, today, right, they, they stuck in the back of the net and like, Shane McGrath just hitting a long ball. And you watch, no, no, Hickey seems to get caught in the off balance and when Slar got it, like, stuck it, right? PJ Roy maybe could have spread himself a little bit better, but see it there, Lark keeps his focus well, just turns away from the tackle and, well, either he won't take in his mind and uh, you know great goal that was in the ninth minute and that gave him a fierce fillip for the first mm. half and uh, great ball here by, by Noel McGrath again you know top corner no chance for the keeper this time and you know well worked move and I think Lark Corbett comes onto the ball very well got a little bit of a bonus there I think for the steps but look you get by with those in the, in, in the All-Ireland and this one was a particularly good goal didn't deal with too well and Noel McGrath seemed to pop up for him and for very fast wrists knocked it in you see it better from this angle seems to pull in just seemed to come up and he flicked it back into the corner, but I think that was a decisive score, Des, mm. third goal, and this one was the icing in the cake, basically. Uh, Patrick Marr, great work and lovely bit of skill there, knocked into net, and, you know, that was in the final minute, and the game was all over, maybe, but it was great for Lark Robert, hat-trick, and everything put away superbly, and I think that epitomised to Tip's hunger and the way they went about things today, but, you know, four great goals, and yeah. that's going to win your matches. Johnny Dooley, you scored many a goal. Your view on Lars' performance today? Yeah, he was, uh, he was incredible, really. You know, like for any player to, to, to come out in an All Ireland final of all days and score three goals, um, you know, and they were all good goals. Uh, mm. The first goal and, and particularly the second goal. You know, I suppose Noel McGrath set him up for it. Um, you know, it was a great hand pass. He sort of threw off the defenders and, you know, but he took his steps, but he, he knew what he was doing and, uh, you know, he was very well finished. Some said he needed an extra couple of steps to avoid the flying hurlies going by him, but uh, <laughs> we'll chat more about that. Michael. The loss of Henry Shefflin is, is obviously going to be a huge talking point and him starting. Yeah. What did you make of it all? Well, you know, he, he obviously was a huge obstacle, Kenny, but you'd have to say there was 13 minutes gone. You know, I think there's a lot of people saying he shouldn't have been started. I don't agree with that. You have to trust somebody like Henry Shefflin and his judgment and Brian Cody's judgment at this stage of their careers. You know, all they've achieved in the game, you have to trust their judgment. He was... There were six points down when he went off, they, they came back to a point before half time, but where I feel they really missed him was in the first 10 or 15 minutes of the second half, you know, when they were only a point down, they playing with a strong wind, and that's normally where he steps in and, you know, starts showing, you know, takes crucial scores, uh, dictates the pattern of the play really, and shows the leadership to the team. But, you know, we don't know whether he would have been, I don't think Tipperary were going to be beaten today anyway, I don't think we can take away from the Tipperary uh, win by saying Henry Shuffin had to go off, these things happen in games, but certainly from... Uh, I think certainly from Kilkenny's point of view, he was a loss because they, they had nobody else to, you know, we talk about all the leaders in the back, they're in the back line maybe, but up front, nobody else stood up and he wasn't there. Did you think he should have started, Pete? Yes, I think he should have started because he was, if he was ever going to be part of it, uh, he had to start the game because you couldn't bring him on as a sub and replace him with another sub. Um, the other thing is that Henry, Henry, even if he was playing in the top of his game today, I think, um, to be fair to Tipperary, they would, have, they would have won the game. You have to give credit to, to what he's achieved down, down through the years, and he had to be a loss to kick any moment off. But in fairness, uh, it was Tipperary's day. Mm -hmm. I, I, I went into Crow Park today, would you believe, with my voice, and I came out without it. And that was from shouting for Tipperary. So anybody thinks...